Today, we're gonna to show you the one tool that we use that have saved us thousands of dollars on top of giving us back time and our freedom inside of our business. And if you stay tuned till the end, we're gonna share the actual automations that we used inside this tool that has given our agency back the time that we need in order to run our business. So make sure you watch until the end. So the magical tool is called Zapier. Zapier allows you to automate across 5,000 different applications. It allows different applications to communicate with each other and more importantly, allows you to create workflows, which we call automations. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so what we're gonna do now, right now is create an account. So we're gonna head over, just go to our Google search. I'm gonna type in Zapier, all right? It's the first one that comes up and we're gonna go ahead and open an account. Now we're gonna move pretty quickly on this. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we need to do. We're gonna go ahead and hit the sign up button. And if you already have a Google account, which is the way I recommend doing it, I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with my Google account. And it's gonna give you basically a free trial. So, so it's gonna ask you some quick questions, right? It's gonna help us customize your experience. We're marketing basically, and we're gonna do one to 49. Yours might be different, so just sign it up accordingly. I'm gonna hit continue. And then when I hit continue, you're gonna see a whole bunch of information here. And what's cool is, is you're gonna be able to go ahead and select some of the apps that you're using. Now, for instance, we use Google Sheets, we use Google Drive, we use Gmail, and we use Google Calendar. And let's just keep it really simple. And we're gonna use Slack also, again, just to make it super simple because these are the apps we use. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Finish Setup. Now, what's really cool is, and the way they've made it over the years is they made it so the zaps that you're looking for are almost right here. Uh, and a lot of people tend to miss this right away. As you can see, you get a free plan, you get unlimited and it resets and you can go ahead and upgrade and downgrade and do whatever you want. But for testing purposes, this is great. So we're gonna leverage this, right? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see what, what's going on right here, right? So we have save new uh, Gmail attachments to Google Drive. That's perfect. If I'm getting an attachment usually in my business email, it usually has to do with the fact that somebody's trying to send me something. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Now, when you do this, it automatically guides you through the steps. Now, as you can see, it's already got it all set for you. Now, something I wanna make sure that you guys fully understand. There are some key rules when it comes to automations. Everything starts with a beginning step. The beginning step is usually called the trigger. A trigger is like, think of it as the domino. It's the first domino. What is actually causing the domino to get pushed in order for everything else to start going and the other dominoes to fall into place? Well, the first starting trigger is the first action. So as you can see, you get a new attachment in your Gmail account. From that, it's gonna continue if, and we'll go over that in a second, and then it uploads this to your actual drive inside of your business. So let's go ahead and walk through the steps. The starting trigger, meaning that this application Zapier is listening to your Gmail and it's looking for an attachment anytime it receives an actual email. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit the trigger and it says connect Gmail first. So that's pretty simple, right? And if, you, if I'm using a G Suite account or a Gmail account, this is an easy one. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hit sign in. It's gonna ask me for my login credentials on the left-hand side. You see on that little window that's popping up. As you can see, it's right in here. And because I'm already connected and I'm already signed in, I'm just gonna go ahead and allow. And all it's saying is managing your draft, reading, compose, and sending emails on your behalf. Absolutely, because that's the whole point of the automation. All right, I've connected my Gmail account and the event is gonna be whenever it receives a new attachment, it's gonna come in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I have my account connected. And then in here, it's gonna have already some kind of search string. I deleted the search string and I wanted to check my entire inbox and I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Then, as you can see, I hit test trigger. I got my first attachment, which is basically the invoice from Google. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. What it's gonna do is only continue if the attachment exists. So let's see and see if it tested it out. And it does, see, it would have continued. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my Google Drive like you saw before. And uh, now that it's connected, I'm gonna hit continue. And then it's gonna ask me to choose the drive. Now that my drive is connected, I'm gonna go ahead and select my Google Drive. I'm gonna go to my folder. And inside my folder, I'm gonna select attachments. All right, and as you can see, it's got Convert to document, we don't need to, but file name is Google Payments and the attachment is a PDF, which is perfect. And if I wanted to convert it to a Google Doc, I could, but I'm gonna make it super simple. I'm gonna go ahead and test and continue. All right, I should be able to go into my Google Drive and inside my attachments folder, boom, here's the invoice. How cool is that? So now anytime you get an attachment whatsoever from an email and you wanna automatically save it, 
you're going to be able to save it. And what's cool is, I don't know if you've seen it, but it actually names the attachment for you so you don't have to worry about it. You get your the title right from the beginning and then it has the PDF. So this is all set. The next thing I'm going to do is name my Zap uh, from there and we're going to go ahead and publish Zap. We're going to go ahead and turn that on. One of the coolest things about Zapier is that it gives you a lot of examples of what you can automate. So if you're getting confused, I'm like, I really don't know what to do. As you can see, we started off with some of the examples they listed right here based on the apps that we've selected. Well, what if you wanted to use a different application altogether? All you have to do is go to explore. You can see which ones are the most popular. If you click on the most popular and then you're like, Ooh, look at all the cool things I can do with Slack. Look at all the cool things I can do with uh, Adweber, Google Sheets, all these different programs that exist out there. For instance, what if I have a YouTube channel, all right, <laughs> and I wanted to send a Twitter message, uh, can, can that actually happen? So what do I do? I come over here and I type in YouTube. It immediately pulls up YouTube. It gives me some ideas. Well, what? It, look at all the things it, it can coordinate to. And look, I see Twitter. What if every time I post a video, I want to send that video over to Twitter and let everybody know that there's a new video happening? Well, really simply, all I have to do is tweet new videos into YouTube. See, it's already here. And what's cool about it is I got to go ahead and hit try it. And then if I hit try it, look what happens. It actually walks me through the steps. First thing, connect to your YouTube account. No problem. Let's go ahead and do that. See, I connected it. Next, Enter the channel name and it tells you what to do. Watch for new videos uploaded within this channel. The channel IDs look something like this. I will know what my channel is, so I'm going to pause the video and insert that channel ID. You would insert your channel ID. All right, cool. Now it's actually connect your Twitter account. See, it's prompting me to connect to my Twitter account. Now I connected my Twitter account. Then I'm going to hit next and it says new video in title. Link is YouTube URL and it's asking me, hey, do you have a, a video image? And actually I do. And what I have to do for it is look at the actual image. And as you can see, I think there's a high thumbnails, high URL, which means a high res. So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit next and boom, send test. And it automatically posts to my Twitter and I hit next and I turn on my zap. See, it's that simple. I'm going to go back into my Zapier. So click on Zapier up top on the left hand side. I'm like, well, I need another idea. No problem. Go to explore. It, it already has the most popular. I always like to do the most popular because it really works to, uh, but make believe you have a particular CRM. I click on CRM and it works and it pulls up uh, the most known CRMs that everybody's using. If you wanted to use mails, you come back. I want email automations. No problem. Here's a whole list of email automations you can run. And then if you look over to the left hand side, it's got all these different categories that you can use marketing. You click on marketing, all marketing. And it's got the most that it's used and you're like, well, okay, well, how can I use Instagram? All right. Great with pairing a certain apps. Look, it's got discord, Twitter. Maybe I want to post something when I post inside of Instagram to Twitter and the list goes on and on. So I'm going to take you to another couple of examples that will kind of get you going on this. But the cool th part of it is you saw how easy it is. They already have some pre-made formulas for you that you can leverage. So take advantage of it right away. You can do a lot inside of here if you just follow the prompts and explore what's already working for a lot of people out there. Now, as you can see, we made the first one. Now, what I can do here, and just to make it super easy, you can come over here and you can actually name the folder. So if I come in here, I wanted to name the folder Zaps, okay? And then what I wanna do, if I wanna move this particular one into that folder, I'm just gonna go ahead and move into my Google workspace folder and that that way I can keep all my automations organized. So now let's create an automation that whenever somebody fills out an actual application or a Google form, it goes directly into Slack to let you know that you have a new application that's incoming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create one, right? So when you create a zap now, I'm going to hit create zap. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is when somebody fills out that Google form, because that's what we have in our application, right? I'm going to come in here and type in Google form. All right, so we're going to come over here. We're going to go to the Google form again. All I did was select Google form. It's going to ask me to log in my account. My account's already logged in. So yours, it's going to ask you to go in and, and do that. Here, you're going to select the form. The form is going to be new employee application. All right, hit continue. And as you can see, it's going to ask me to test the trigger. Now, I already have some responses in there. Remember, you always need a response. So even if it's you going out there and filling out the response, that's okay. But just make sure you're going to be the one doing that. Awesome. So now it has that test triggers all set to go. So the next thing that I'm going to do is select the application that I want it to go to or that I want to communicate with. 
So I'm gonna come in here and type in Slack. And in Slack, as you can see, I have it connected. I'm gonna choose an event. It's gonna be send a channel message. All right, I'm gonna hit create. All right, now I'm gonna select a particular account. So this is our account here. I'm gonna hit continue. And I'm gonna select the channel I want just to our general channel but you might have one that's a strictly enabled application so you can check them in there. And basically what I wanna do is, and this is the cool part about Zapier, I wanna pull information from the actual Google Sheet or Google Form that I wanna put into the Slack message so I can click on certain things. The one thing that I wanna do is I wanna get the person's email, and the second thing I wanna do is get the actual attachment for the rest. As you can see, when I go to a text message right here and I click enter, it is, says insert data. Well, I'm gonna say email, Boom, and I'm gonna put the actual email of the person, and then I'm gonna to go to the second line, and I'm gonna see what other information's available. Now, if I wanted to capture certain questions, I can do that, but I don't really wanna do that. I just wanna get the email, because I wanna immediately check out the resume. So, I have the email situated right here. If I had like a first name and a last name, I'd put it in there, but I don't in this case, so that's fine. I'm gonna actually add to send as a bot. And then instead of seeing the bot name, I'm gonna put application bot. Okay, and what's really cool is I can even give the bot a, like a little notification, which I know that the code for it, and by the way, if ever you were curious on how to get this, if you hit the more button, there's a whole bunch of things you can do here. Now for instance, I know that bell is an icon, because I want a little bell going off, so I'm gonna put the bot icon as belt, uh, and it says include link in zap, yes, and attach image by URL, there's no image. And then I'm gonna come all the way down and it says, do you wanna include a file? And here is where I'm gonna put the attachment. So I'm gonna hit show all options and I'm gonna click right here, attach your resume here. Boom, and I'm gonna hit continue. And then I'm gonna hit test and review. Is I'm gonna come over here, and, cool. And that's all set. Now, let me go over with you some of the other ones that we use that we find incredibly helpful inside of our agency. All right, so this is our favorite one. So what we do is when somebody fills out a survey or they fill out an audit of any sort, we use job form, you can use type form, any form, Google forms, it doesn't really matter. So whenever we get a new submission coming in, format the date and time so it's readable so we know exactly the time and date that they've actually created it. We create a Google Sheet row where we track all of our leads coming from any system whatsoever so we can go ahead and just keep track of all the leads coming in. Then we send a text message in Slack to our appointment setters that will immediately start calling the client. The next one that we use that adds an incredibly nice personal touch is we send a handwritten note to our customers whenever they pay. So the next automation that we wanted to share with you is we actually send a handwritten note to individuals that become our customers. So what we use is something called the webhook. Now I'm not gonna get into webhooks, stick to the next video in order to get that, but it is a pretty simple process in where you just get one information packet from one system and you push it on into another. And in this situation, we're getting it from our CRM high level and what we're doing is we're taking all that information that we've collected from the customer using this thing called the webhook and we're pushing it out to send a handwritten card using uh, an application called handwritten where it physically writes an actual handwritten card. What's cool is it will actually send it out to the customer too. Catches the information when they become a customer through our CRM, then sends out a personally handwritten note. We're gonna make sure to include this shares app inside there. Now the cool thing about a shares app is when you click it, it automatically goes into your account, then you just have to make the connections. And the last one that I'm gonna share is basically whenever I create a task inside of Google, I use a project management software that my team and I use. So if I'm out at the gym or I'm doing something and I wanna create a quick little task, what I'll do is I'll actually put it in my Google Tasks and then what it will automatically do is put it as a project or as a task inside of our project management software that my team can and go and complete it. Really simple, collect a Google task whenever I put a new task uh, inside of my Google tasks. I format the date to make sure that it's the date that it came in today. And then I create a task in a particular board for my team to go and do once that task goes in there. Hope you enjoyed these. Stay on the lookout for the next video because in the next video, we're gonna show you how to use webhooks, which is a very powerful feature inside of Zapier that allows you to do even more with some of the automations that you can create.